All right, Stat 1800, more on, uh, the, okay, the previous video, uh, we examined ways to organize and uh, display ca categorical and quantitative variables. Uh, the purpose of this video is to focus in on uh, the five number summary box plots and outliers specifically for uh, categorical variables. So uh, let's get to it. So first of all, quartile, uh, is a measure of location, and we have three quartiles, quartile one, quartile two, quartile three. And the way I like to think about quartiles is if you had a string and you wanted to cut the string into four equal pieces, how many cuts would you have to make? Well, you'd have to make three cuts, right? You'd make a cut in the center. You'd make a cut on the bottom piece of the string and a cut on the other piece of the string, so you make three cuts. Well, that's equivalent to these quartiles, Q1, Q2, Q3. These are the cuts that divide our data set into four groups where we have about 25% of the values uh, in each group, depending on sample size. So uh, the first quartile uh, is what I would call the first cut. Again, we have our data range from low to high. So it separates, provides a location, if you will, for the separation of the bottom 25% and the top 75%. The second quartile is the same as the median. It separates the data into two equal pieces, the top 50% and the bottom 50%. And of course, the third quartile uh, separates the top 75% <clears throat> of the sorted values, I'm sorry, separates the bottom 75% of the sorted values uh, from the top 25%. Now, I provide a caution here because what I have noticed is you can have the exact same data set and put, uh, enter the data into different technology and uh, it, it, you will get different quartiles. Now, it doesn't happen often, uh, but there are situations, circumstances where that happens. So I wanted to just let you know that depending on the technology that you use, uh, you could get uh, different uh, quartiles. So that's, you know, for your homework assignment, you'll definitely want to uh, use StatCrunch so you get the correct answers. So a uh, few things that we define after we uh, get our quartiles. First of all, there's something called an IQR, which is an inner quartile range, and that's just simply Q3 minus Q1. Uh, we have something called a semi-inner quartile range, or a semi-IQR, and that's just taking uh, the value Q3 minus Q1 divided by 2. And then you have a mid-quartile, which is just Q1 plus Q3 uh, divided by 2. That value will always be really close to the median, uh, depending on whether we have a skewed distribution or a symmetric distribution. More about that uh, in the next video, as a matter of fact. So once we understand quartiles, we can create what's called a five-number summary. So a five-number summary consists of the minimum value, the maximum value, and the first, second, and third quartile. Again, Q2, the second quartile, is the same as the median. And this is just going to be one of those things that you have to get written in your notes. Uh, it's not intuitively clear. You didn't come out of the womb knowing about five number summaries and quartiles. So you just have to write this stuff down because there's a definitions of things that we create, uh, uh, numerical summaries that we create uh, to better describe our data, better describe quantitative data. So let's just go through an illustration. Uh, what we have here are some wait times for Space Mountain. Um, and we want to find the five number summary. So the very first thing we would do is we would place the data in order from lowest to highest. And you can see that that's already uh, uh, been done for you. OK, now, so what do we need for the five number summary? We need the high number, the low number. Well, that's going to be easy. The low number is 10. The high number is 110. So we have two-fifths of our five-number summary already, the low number 10, high number uh, 110. Now, the next thing we would do is we would come to the center. And in this case, we have an even number. So we're going to have to average those two values in the center, which would be 35. 
And so that's our Q2. And then we find the median of all the numbers below that 35. And then we have the find the median of all the numbers above the 35. Again, the illustration about cutting a string, uh, when we make that middle cut, the cut of the lower piece of string is, is the center of that remaining piece. Well, that 25 that's circled on your screen is the value, the median of the lower piece of information, lower piece of data. So in this situation, our five number summary would be the small number 10, the large number 110, the median 35, Q1 25, and the uh, Q3, which would be 50. Now, once we find our uh, uh, five number summary, we can create something called a box plot. Some people call it box and whisker diagram, box and whisker plot. Uh, I just call it a box plot. And um, a box plot displays the five number summary. So let me show you how that actually happens. So the procedure, find the five number summary, uh, construct a line segment from the minimum to the max, construct a box, much clearer when we see it actually happen. So in this case, because our numbers range from 10 to 110, when I make my axis down here, I would want it to go from something below 10, maybe maybe zero, up to something above 110, maybe 120. I would come in and make a point at 10, a point at 25, a point at 35, a point at 50, and a point at 110. And then I would construct the box plot accordingly. Um, some people call these box plots because the center part is the box. And then these things that extend are called the whiskers. So, yeah, whatever. So, anyway, if you're given a block box plot, you can tell that the IQR is just going to be the distance from Q1 to Q3. It's just the length of the box plot. plot. And keep in mind that box plots can be vertical or box plots can be uh, horizontal. Now, we get into skewness. Uh, and a box plot can often be used uh, to identify skewness. And I'm going to give you a, uh, 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 a video, probably the next one, on how we define skewness for a histogram. But we can say with respect and in the context of a box plot that we have skewed data if we don't have symmetric, uh, a symmetric box plot. So what do I mean by that? If we come down to the one I am circling right in the center, notice how the box in the center, that the center line is about in the center, and notice how these whiskers on both sides extend about the same length. Well, that shows that we have symmetry. Notice in a uniform distribution, notice this box in the center. Notice that the line in the center is about kind of in the center, uh, loosely defined, and that these whiskers, if you will, on the left and the right are about the same length. Now, we have a skewed distribution. That doesn't happen. We have our box, which the center line is about in the, in the center of the box, but if we look at this whisker going to the right and compare its length to the whisker going to the left, then clearly there's a difference in those lengths. That demonstrates, illustrates to me, that we have a skewed distribution. If these whiskers are about the same length, it tells me that we have a symmetric distribution. So uh, if someone stops me on the street and says, Dr. Darbro, what's the purpose of a box plot? I'm going to say two things. Uh, this is going to be a great test question. Um, You'll probably see this again. What is the purpose of a box plot? Well, I think it's twofold. First of all, a box plot uh, is a picture that displays the five number summary. And the second thing a box plot does for us is it identifies outliers. So the way that we create a box plot that identifies outliers 
is the first thing we do is we find the quartiles. So for this problem, Q1 was 25, the median was 35, and Q3 was 50. The next thing we do is we calculate the value for 1.5 times the IQR. Well, the IQR in this case is going to be Q3 minus Q1, which is 25, and 1.5 times 25 is 37.5. So a data value is an outlier if it's above Q3 by an amount greater than 1.5 times the IQR. So Q3 in this case, and where I am, I'm right, right here. Let me, okay, right there. So if I take Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR, Q3 is 50. 1.5 times the IQR, as we saw right here, is 37.5. If we have a value above 87.5, it's an outlier. Below Q1 by the same amount. Take Q1, 25, subtract the 37.5, which is 1.5 times the IQR. Negative 12.5, if we have a value below negative 12.5, then it is an outlier. So in our situation, we can see that we have no data because it's unreasonable to have a wait time for Space Mountain that would be negative. But we do see when, when we analyze our data set that we have two values, 105 and 110, which are above 87.5. So you'll notice that these values where I'm circling out here to the right will be denoted by points because they're outliers. They're not connected to the main frame of the box plot, again, because that's the way we display uh, outliers uh, for quantitative variables uh, when we use box plots. So I hope this helps. Um, it'll... Uh, We'll find out that creating a box plot on stack crunch is very, very, very easy. And um, so um, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, address that in a future video.